Hello and welcome to the 15th episode of Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here at the New Art School and the Design Deducts podcast. Our guest today is T. Uglo. Welcome, T. Hi, Hello. it's very nice to be here. Great to have you. So tell us a bit about you. Um, well, my name is T and I have worked at Google for... Um, Oh, far too long, really. 12, 13 years um, as part of um, their evolving kind of creative group. Um, and then I've, I suppose over the last decade, I've been mainly focused working as part of Google's creative lab. Um, and I run a really small team that focus on um, creative collaborations with um, cultural groups. So theatre makers, uh, musicians, writers, publishers, um, ballet companies, um, all sorts of different places. Um, and often what we're looking at is how technology can be used. Um, or how, how technology, like there's, there's ways in which we all used technology, but like within the creative practice, it's how, how, um, how we can kind of hack technology, how we can begin to use technology in new and interesting ways to make the work that we make um, as um, cultural practitioners. I mean, and then most recently over the last, since, since we have all been locked down, um, I've been, I've been, I do, I do an awful lot of talking, I'm on the road a lot, obviously, um, and I've had this very curious thing of not having that. So the last mm -hmm. um, couple of months I've been doing um, classes online for schools that are shut down, for teachers that are shut down, um, and uh, which has been fantastic and um, has been a really interesting sort of exercise in, in actually in, in understanding who's, who, who I am talking to and, and, and what is to be learned. And, and also I think a lot of I, I'm a great believer in, in things that don't work terribly well. I'm a great fan of think, those things. So I find that there are lots of holes in um, the technology that we've created that, that speak very much more to, area, like, again, just as with it, in, any aspect of our um, world, like there are, there are holes which speak to groups that are not really catered for. Mm -hmm. And that's been really interesting to me. So that's sort of why we're here, I guess. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> so how, how has the design process and the process of making things do you think have ch has changed over the past decade? Oh, it's changed enormously, I think. Um, well, I've been in design for about 20 years. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've, when I started, I started out right at the beginning of the web, mm -hmm. as we know. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the web sort of was launched um, yeah. in 93. And I think there were still like tens of servers when I sort of started. Actually, my first interactions with it were not positive. I did not enjoy it. I very rarely enjoyed the internet. I very rarely feel that it is as good as it should be, however good it has got. Um, but um, yeah, we, I had, I had a doc dot com in the first dot com boom in 99 2000 and then i went away and worked for the royal academy of arts for a few years building a website for them and working on their on the royal academy magazine so that was this whole period of moving from digital from um plate to digital so we had this extraordinary kind of evolutionary moment in 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 publishing um um and then i think you see that happening again and again these cycles of 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 industries being very fundamentally transformed by um, technological shifts. So, so my entire career has basically been marked by those moments. I mean, it was the same with the music industry during our first dot com, um, when we were looking at um, things like Napster and, and, and LimeWire and these very early mm. file sharing yeah. sort of tools that, that understood what can and can't be compressed. Mm -hmm. And then there have been odd occasions where um, technology has much in the way that sort of VR comes and then goes, fades away again. We have these um, technologies which feel like they're about to change things dramatically. I think certainly around education, um, 
the like the idea of of um, online online and remote schooling has mm. has not it's not a new idea. Mm. Um, um, and the same with literature, like the idea that there is there are better forms or more interesting and challenging forms. Um, working with the arts has been digital arts for decades, and yet it still is not something which has any kind of um, sort of empirical value model, mm -hmm. which is very curious if you think about it and how, how that is a fundamentally commercial enterprise. So yeah, I think there are lots of spaces where I'm very I'm very interested at the moment in the, in this in this period of um, sort of radical change where we've all seen all of us have made dramatic changes to our, our daily lives in the space of a month and a half mm. or a month or less. Um, and you see, you see kind of the, these lovely photos of the change, the, the environmental benefits or well, the change in air quality in big cities, but also and there's going to be significant changes to the mental health. And, but also just suddenly there's this huge change to education and how, how we teach when we can't teach, when you can't be in front of someone and, and, and look them in the eye and, and, certain, and you can't kind of grab a piece of paper and sort of draw lines across everything. This becomes a very difficult and different space. Um, so uh, like both within pra our practice, which is also going through a similar thing, there's a very, very collaborative nature to um, teaching just a lot as, as there is to, to practice. And I think it's really fascinating when you get these moments of change because what, it, what you find more than anything else are what doesn't work terribly well. And what doesn't work terribly well is always much more interesting than the things that do work terribly well. So um, I'm super curious about all of, the, um, all of the tools. My team at the moment are busy <laughs> hacking together it, it sort of it seems like infinite numbers of different um, codecs and APIs and startups who are trying to allow people to use um, sort of base tools like like this one, like like sort of meeting tools like Zoom or Skype or Meet or Duo, mm -hmm. um, to then um, publish those and to be able to do so with levels of interactivity, to be able to do so with levels of um, like audience interaction, to do so with levels of feedback, to do so with the level of like sort of simultaneous interaction, to do so with the idea of um, all of the ritual that surrounds any, any, anything that we do in daily life. It doesn't really matter what it is, whether it's going to the bank or, or going to the doctors or going to the theatre or going into a classroom. There are rituals and routines that we are used to. And when we transform those, it transforms the experience. Just like watching a film on your phone is very different to watching it in a big screen. There are, there are, there are rituals and aspects of information which when we change the format and the, the process of them um, become different. And, and, and those things are fascinating to explore. Sorry, no, 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 it's brilliant. Bad. I mean, I mean, how, but how do you see all this translating yeah. as into 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 education? So, oh well, I think yeah. No, I, I, what do you so specifically? Or? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, how are you able to communicate all these wonderful things into your online classes right now? Because because that's the topical, of course, is online. Of course, we're going to go back to a combination of online and offline, hopefully yes. soon. But. But how do you see all that? How can we best communicate that to current students and to current people that um, are interested in, in developing themselves? Um, I think that, um, like, uh, sort of m my whole practice as an educator is not really to um, inform people of skills. <laughs> I'm not of very course, good at course, saying, course, course. this is how a grid system works. My entire career has basically been around thinking about the um, thinking about the tools that we're using. Mm -hmm. um, I, it turns out I'm not a terribly good designer. I'm not a terribly good developer. I'm not a terribly good producer or project manager. I don't think terribly well in terms of Gantt charts. I certainly shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a legal contract 
Um, I have a lot of things which I don't do terribly well, and a, and a lot of those are due to kind of um, my own kind of <laughs> me as an individual. But so when in education, what I'm very much more interested in is allowing um, people to, or allowing my students, I, I guess they're just people really, I don't really think of them as students. Of course. To um, challenge things, to question. Yes. This seems to me to be the whole point. A lot of the talks start with principles, with, with the idea that great thinkers, like the great thinkers do not know and acknowledge that rather than do know. <laughs> Like any sense of, of knowledge being a finite quality is so um, ridiculous. Yes, yes, it's 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 a retrograde <laughs> principle. Yeah, and yet we're brought through until quite late on in our actual lives. We are educated by um, with the principle that there are correct answers, um, and that so this comes as a great shock, I think, to a large number of students. To a large number of people at yes, any point yes, in their lives, yes, absolutely. That, that, that the, the, the notion of certainty is a, a, like a laughable sort of connotation. It doesn't exist. There yes. is no truth. When you have data, this is not truth. These are not facts. These are observations, mm -hmm. and they may be um, indicative observations, and they will almost certainly be normative observations. And if you expanded your data sample, they would become broader. <laughs> But we we but they would always have outliers that might be significant and 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 that simple piece of 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 knowledge to me is the only thing that I'm trying to teach again and again and again and again through this process of um, and it does come back down to this idea of like when there are practical things someone was asking me about my design process my design research and I was like oh I suppose my design research. My, my research phase is becoming particularly interested in something and why it doesn't work. Um, and that involves doing what anyone else would call like a rabbit hole on the internet. Like that's mm -hmm. what that is. This is your research process. This mm -hmm. is where you go and gather as much information as possible, ideally conflicting opinions on it. And I'm not, I'm, I'm very practical. I'm a pra practicing um, creative. So I'm, I'm not, Whilst I get very interested in the, the um, academic, the, the, the most pejorative form of that term is that it, it is moot. <laughs> like, yes, yes. The, the mo like, I, 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 have, I come from an academic family. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I believe in academia. However, I am also very conscious of that point at which academia becomes non-practical mm -hmm. or impractical. So I'm, and, and within design, I think that is not actually very helpful. So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm like a lot of our projects are like, okay, we need to stop now because we are now no longer, you are now, we are now indulging our interest in a topic rather than, um, rather than moving this conversation forward in any way or shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the challenge is that, that the great number of uh, schools and universities uh, are teaching for a world that doesn't exist anymore. So there's mm -hmm. the disconnect between how the system was established to work, creating uh, uh, employees for factories and accountants and scribes, and yeah. so that hasn't been that hasn't been questioned, has been refreshed. So we're we're in the process of refreshing it, and that's where we need to be uh, uh, doing exactly what, what what you're saying. I agree. Like the, again, I, it's something that's sort of feels not not controversial, which is that, um, yes, uh, much as our society is structured around an industrial, um, like industrial routines and traditions, mm -hmm. um, and we still have a great many of those right down to opening hours and all of these things which are very sort of quaintly anachronistic. So our education systems are profoundly anachronistic, partly because there's been no great... Um, change state there's been no great moment of, of of irrevocable shift and that's why i rather like moments like this i know it's a tragic moment and it's very difficult for everyone and it's incredibly difficult it's difficult for businesses it's difficult for schools it's difficult for parents i have two children um and um their mother's going crazy <laughs> the other mother um, 
I fortunately don't have to deal with them quite as much. And um, the um, yes, there is a, there is there is a, such a kind of paucity of thought that has gone into how you deal with this situation. Um, and and yet there was there were historically like um, models wherein wherein we can see how that thought has developed through whether that's through remote school teaching programs whether it's through um, radio like th these are not um, these these are these things like often have been discovered and and evolved before and I suppose that's like any moment in education part of what you want a student to do is to discover something. But then you really do need to let them know that that has already been discovered um, and that that's not actually a, a great and groundbreaking find. And that's sort of, the for me, the, the educator's challenge is to, is to set people, is to set people, set people off to, on their journeys of discovery, but also to provide them with the insight to guide that journey much more so than to dictate um, how or what information needs to be learned. Yeah, um, I, yeah you know, it's, it's a very peculiar thing watching your children going through similar sort of routines of education. Uh, some things which are wildly different and which, you, which are, seem, seem to socially be dramatically advanced and others which are very much, I imagine, how their grandparents learn things. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's all very peculiar. Um, so. so no, I mean, the greatest challenge I find is how, because, because in, in design education, uh, we're creating an experience. So it's almost mm -hmm. like, it's not the information, it's not the words, it's what is not said. It's the space, it's the experience. It's the, the, the group work, in a way. So... The greatest challenge for online education is, is how do we create the experience uh, in an online environment? Yeah, I think that's actually one of the spaces where there's some fascinating, there are tools which we're not using. So, um, like, I, I am genuinely interested in the number of, um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it is fascinating watching the tech companies, this, again, kind of scramble around realizing that there is this huge consumer and education need, which mm -hmm. is not met by the, by the practicalities of um, the enterprise tools that they've created. So some of Google's tools, which have been, um, have been previously much more adaptable, like Hangouts was, and Hangouts on there was a wonderfully adaptable tool. Mm -hmm. There are technological problems that we will not get over in a hurry, such as the latency around sound. It's like you can't stream, I mean, we can all cope with a slight delay in, in um, um, transmission, in visual, in the visual information that we're receiving, that's fine. But we really can't cope with, um, the, and and the, with latency in sound, especially if you're trying to collaborate, especially if you are moving ideas back and forth in the way that humans do. There's a very peculiar thing about quite how tiring it is talking to a little green dot in comparison to talking to a human. So there are things, there are lots of very interesting human language tools that we use that, that one... Um, that mean that there's information again that we we that falls away. Um, we often will talk about things having a taste test or it's smelling funny or feeling things in our gut. Those things are not, they do not taste of anything. Mm -hmm. And they probably don't smell of anything. And you certainly can't feel it in your gut or certainly not in your bones. I've never really understood bones once, but the idea of having a gut feeling, mm -hmm. I very frequently have a gut feeling about um, situations, but that's a situational analysis based on lots of very scrappy pieces of information being fed in simultaneously. Whereas um, the digital tools and the digital, this idea of having singular streams of information at one time, this, this notional thing of focus, um, whilst we all like our children to focus, that's not how we learn. <laughs> that's not how a three-year-old learns or a four-year-old learns. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if, if, if focus was how we learn, every baby would be on point all the time until they'd nailed that language thing um, and learned how to do it. They were then not. There was a huge aspect of play and pretend. And there are lots of 
pieces of information. The reason I was talking about like feeling things in your gut or smelling is because those are that's an, uh, that's a, those are situational analysis. We do not have a word or language for describing the um, sensory capacity with which we um, understand that. Like we don't have a smell, but we are doing this smelling of information. And the information will come from a lot of different contexts. Very often it will come from micro gestures, um, from body language, from feeling a room. And it is just as important, it is incredibly important in, in, in working in collaborative design capacities. Just as much as the idea of being able to, to, to put marks down on paper together, it's the idea of being able to read off other individuals and how they are responding to um, your words or even your gestures or the marks you're making or, or the position that you're taking. Um, it is like a, a, a fundamental of non-rote learning that you, that you do not have focus mm -hmm. purely on the content because otherwise you might as well be reading it off a book. Um, sure. and, and, and reading from a book is a very good way to learn. It's a very focused way to learn. But it is, um, if it were the only way to learn, we wouldn't need to worry about classrooms. It's, it's, so yes, the reason that we are struggling is because the tools that we have are um, for business and business would like, um, needs one person to talk at a time. <laughs> and also needs to manage a meeting in, in a particular kind of structured way. Mm -hmm. So you see all of these enterprise tools which do not allow for, whether it's technological reasons or otherwise, and you see a lot of more playful versions of this. So and things like, um, what's it? Not party times. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Hangouts tool that I really like called um, House Party mm -hmm. that's, um, that's kind of daft. Um, and, and, and in a business context, awful. But people just kind of drop in and out. And you can see people's, like, we, we, when we are in company, we're used to guarding or not guarding our facial conditions. I mean, um, like, the, the, the tools which are more popular are the ones which are more fun mm -hmm. and playful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they actually require less... Um, concentration, less focus, and, and those are the tools that we need for a classroom where actually it is possible to drift in and out. It is possible not to constantly feel that one is scrutinized. Um, it is possible to have side conversations or side glances. It is possible to do, um, to throw ideas up and to riff and to joke and to jam and and for all of the the, the non everything that one would feel like as being non um, non essential information, but that that is is probably how everyone is 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 learning. So so I mean I don't know I don't know. Lefties, do 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 stop me if you want. I was just going to no, talk no. a little bit about. <laughs> Um, uh, well, I, yeah. <laughs> are there any tools in development? Are there any tools in development that that are going to strengthen what you're saying? So, uh, um, this, this different not for education. There are. I don't think there are for education. This is the. This is what's curious to me. I think mm. there are from a consumer perspective, because you're seeing lots of startups. We are using Zoom. Zoom is effectively a startup and has been used, and I know has been used a lot outside of the corporate environment, partly because it's not a secure tool um, and there are a lot of other implications that, that um, are problematic for, for corporate interests mm -hmm. um, and also for educational interests and I think that educational groups are beginning to or regulators are beginning to understand that um, and the same is true for, for many other um, third party applications and protocols like things which allow us to Everyone quite likes the view where you can see everyone. Um, and that's got to lead to some quite interesting places. There's a very curious thing with the Facebook portal thing that they were selling where it literally has a kind of motion tracker. So it will follow, I don't know if it follows the dog or whether it's following faces, but it, 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 the camera will follow you as you move around. 
those sorts of things are actually really fascinating mm -hmm. because it creates um, a much more ambient sense. Sound is incredibly important. So at the moment we have effectively mono, we might have stereo, but I'm not sure whether the degree to which even this recording is in stereo. Um, I don't know, let's try, I'll move my microphone from side to side. <laughs> And people can decide whether or not it's been, um, whether we've made, managed to retain any stereo quality mm, to it. Mm, mm. But stereo is limited. This is two, two things. We're used to, um, and we have got things like, uh, like um, H, 8D um, um, sound technologies. There are lots of binaural sound technologies. There are lots of positional, um, positional kind of tools which are allowing us to move, make sound into a spatial sense. So I do think that when, um, when the screen becomes less flat, when the camera becomes less obvious, when, the, when, the, when you are working in a space and that the sound can become, sound especially, I'm very obsessed with sound. When sound can become um, more oriented around um, location, then we'll be in an interesting place. One of the great difficulties for sound, of course, is that, um, um, it's, here's two great difficulties. One is that, like, it, from 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 a learning perspective, interpretive interpretive note taking and an interpretive interpretive um, experience is much more valuable. But mm -hmm. an interpretive experience actually often relies on um, a, if not simultaneous, then a um, uh, a kind of near immediate like uh, cross referencing with other points of of um, interpretive simultaneous uh, uh, interpretive experiential things like what did you think oh what did you think when they were talking about that what do you mean they're talking about that oh you know when they were talking about this oh is that how you saw it that is a really really profound part of your learning process that is how you um and analyze and integrate information so so i've seen a couple of things where there were like breakout rooms and it's like wow what amazingly corporate language but yes a breakout room is kind of the equivalent of going to the bar and talking about the class that you just had and building that into lesson time or mm. literally walking down the corridor is important. Mm. If everyone just turns off their laptop or turns off their screen, it's not important. The idea of um, placing sound, I, I, so much of the work I'm doing with theatre and, and, and the arts generally is, is very interested in how we, how we understand where sound is and how hard it is for computers however many cameras you give them to locate sound in space. It's one of the great problems for the virtual realities and the AR realities is that we can do that for the eyes because we have a, a bi-ocular okay. solution, but we have with our ears, we are um, from a very early age, we are locating and, and spatially positioning um, sound information. And actually, unfortunately, it depends very much on the shape of our ears. So <laughs> everyone's ears are unique, therefore, I, I, genuinely identifying where a sound is coming from is as important, the shape of your ears is as important as the, the quality of the technology that you're using. Um, so until we get to a point of having ear scanning tech, mm. which is not enormously unthinkable, mm. um, that creation of spatialization is important. So the two things that I would love to see more are allowing for informal, um, informal interaction um, and it, both during and immediately post any kind of educational thing. I think this thing where, where meeting ends is, is terrible, actually. I think it's an awful thing. Um, and like, and yeah, and the idea is like people do use chat rooms and I know that kind of works, but it's still textual. Um, you don't get any of the, um, that, uh, micro gesture based information mm. and the other one is like is um is like higher quality binaural experiences so i think those are probably a few years away and when we have those you'll begin to i think the next time we have one of these the the, the vr experience will probably be very profound i know that 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 from facebook's position that the biggest market they see for um virtual reality is probably old people's homes <laughs> Because actually, or, or generally like the elderly, because actually the ability to, who are housebound, who are effectively like us, um, I'm sure they're there kicking themselves at the moment because this is a perfect moment to have, to create 
social experiences mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to be visually perfect it needs to be an ex experientially um synchronous so that we all experience the same the the moment together um so those kind of things will will effectively be classified but yes there's so many kind of things that don't work which which lead you to really interesting ways of thinking about how things can work and will work that um I don't know if it was, if it, you know, if someone were employing me to do it, I would have plenty to do for the next five to 10 years. <laughs> Brilliant. So you're saying there is, a, there is a gap in the market for educational applications <clears throat> to improve the creation of an experience in teaching and learning. I think there's always gaps in markets. Like there are always enormous sort of opportunities. Um, the actual, may, like, I don't generally work in, in that language because what I find is that I find there are interesting flaws. So just like any flaw in any, any set of data or information, if you were working in any field, you would be like, the thing that would be most interesting to you was not that, um, um, would not be specific to a, um, a school as a known fact or known entity. It would be a missing like a couple of years and you would be fascinated to know what happened in that period or it would be a shift in um, style and you'd be fascinated to know what actually occurred to drive that change um, and I find it so I find when we play with technology the things that I find most interesting are the points at which we have not um, built human um, or, or natural interface, for want of a better word, like, um, what is a better word? The way humans do things is quite observable. The way computers force us to do things is quite observable. Where those two things differ, there are huge holes and they are normally, rely, normally occur purely because of the technical limitations of the machine. Um, not because um, humans learn better or perform better. Some, some maybe like the typewriter is quite an interesting question. Um, but normally technology um, adapts us to it rather than um, us adapting um, the technology to, to how humans best behave. And with digital, we are definitely at that stage because we are losing huge qualities and quantities of, of um, experience and it doesn't matter what you're teaching, but certainly with design, certainly with creative skills. Um, and so you look not so much at um, how to overcome those in the short term, but what those are, <laughs> like, what are they? <laughs> um, and I think that when you begin to observe those, then you begin to observe gaps, holes in the market. So as you might say. we are, we are adapting to technology. We are losing our human elements yeah. and adapting to technological oh, yeah. elements. <laughs> Think about when you are talking to your computer to ask it something, this, this lovely idea that we speak to machines to, to ask mm -hmm. it questions. Um, and I find myself saying, um, good coffee near me, <laughs> rather than, hey, Google, where is a decent coffee house near here that serves the kind of coffee that I want to know, that I like? <laughs> it's just about to trigger a response to this will probably come up. <laughs> Let me try and stop it. <laughs> Um, um, must not use that example. Um, you know, this, this is the thing. We, we, that, that search query is far too complicated for it to answer to. So we are effectively moderating and modifying our language to become a kind of text speak in order to get the result that we want out of the technology because the technology is limited, not because we are limited. Mm. Um, so, and yeah, we will build to... Like theoretically, no engineer wants to do that, but every businessman just wants the best, most efficient solution. In fact, humans probably want the best, most efficient solution. Our language probably gets simpler and simpler. Um, it's just more efficient, more practical, but it's less interesting um, and it's less nuanced and it's less rich. And, and we believe in, you and I, and I'm sure anyone listening believes in um, a richer human existence. So those are the those are the spaces that that um, when we talk about that where we learn where we truly learn what we're talking about is where we truly learn the richness of um, participatory education 
and that's those are the those are the the spaces that can be filled. Whether they can be filled profitably, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, they could be filled. And mm. and and m- my practice is much more about things that could be done rather than um, will be done. Mm-hmm. It's it's I mean, and and it's a, amazing to look at the way in which things occur historically because of markets as well. You look at privacy and you look at the decisions that different companies make. Every time anyone seems to make um, a human, a, a, a humanist decision over a, a business decision, humans rather let us down <laughs> and seem to opt far more for, <laughs> for the, um, the decision that might not necessarily be in their best interests it's perfectly peculiar, but again, it's a fascination of, of studying humans, I guess. Yes, absolutely. It's just fantastic. Uh, what would be your, your advice to, to aspiring uh, people that are interested in entering the world of design and technology? Uh, either as, as a, practitioners? A student or a graduate? Yes, as, 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 as practitioners. What would be your best advice to those that want to enter the world of design and um, technology? I have a thing like so when I'm hiring, I very much try try to avoid hiring on <clears throat> I don't really want it is possible to be something that someone else wants you to be. It is very possible to do that. I did it for many years. Mm-hmm. Um and um and we're all used to that and we have like the roles that we play and the identities we assume. Um within your own practice, it is um probably the thing you will spend the most time trying to escape is the idea that you are making for for another rather than making for yourself. Even when, and it is perfectly possible to make for yourself within the boundaries of, and you can see it, you can see artists and creatives at their best, at the top of their profession, look like they are um, making work that is, is what is the work that they want to make. Mm. And I, I often say, to like the juniors that start with me or around me that whilst there are things that we need them to do, the thing that we don't know we needed them to do, we don't know. Like that's our unknown. So if they never show us the thing that the thing that they think, like their work, their practice, if they never bring that, um, then um, then we will never know their capacity. At the same time, I try and point out to them, in them that if they never bring us the thing that, that we want or that the brief asked for, we will fire them. <laughs> so it is very much the balance between those two worlds. But, but eventually you discover that if you do have like a um, natural attitude, you know, if you do have your vision and, and the sense of, of, of a personal kind of work, mm-hmm. body of work, People are much more likely to ask ask you to deliver them that over time than they ask you to deliver something which is you know is 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 not is not their strong point. So so always focus on your strengths mm. and don't try too much to be the thing that they want you to be. Just mm. just enough to stop mm. getting fired. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant. That's that's no that's my <laughs> I'm not sure if that's <laughs> Good advice or not? Oh, no, uh, for me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So your your personal project you're working on, you're working on some books and some very interesting uh, things at the moment. Tell us more about that. Oh yeah, I, I mean my personal projects um, tend to be more around my personal life. So like um, I am, um, I've just finished a. We're just publishing. It's very sad. It's a very sad moment for me because um, we're publishing a book, but. There's no party. We get no, 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 no celebration. Virtual, We're virtual, have kind of, virtual party. Yeah, I know. I know. We're going to do that. I've got to get in touch with people and um, ask them to do this sort of thing, actually, where we mm, can do a little mm, bit of, mm. of talking and reading. Because um, it is a I grab it. Um, it is a um, anthology of um, speeches by um, um, LGBTQ heroes. So it's really a, kind of like a history book. Um, and it's got sort of our celebrities like George Takai, it's got like Ulrich. So for me, it's been it's a very beautiful book, which is absolutely nothing to do with me. 
Um, and it just takes, um, we did, we did, we took sort of um, some of the most profound speeches from gay rights history. And gay rights history, it dates back over a hundred and nearly 150 years, actually. It really does, it's quite extraordinary to see, to, to see the history, again, we get back to education, the idea of the history that we're taught around mm -hmm. Stonewall and 50 years of gay rights. And you're like, yes, Stonewall was our moment in time. And 80 years before that, Germans were standing in front of the Federation right, arguing for um, men, the, the right of men to love other men and being shouted down and, and exiled from the country. Um, German women sort of in the, like 20 years later, were talking about um, lesbians being erased from the women's movement. Um, there were, in, and then like the first, the first gay rights movement in America was founded by a German, amazingly, in 1924. And then there were these amazing groups, like in both in America and in, and in Europe and around the world, actually, who have um, slightly get sidetracked by our desire to have a very simple history. There were 10 riots, at least 10, civil disturbances um, before Stonewall. Um, and yet it, it, it sort of all gets caught up in that. And we forget how, like, how powerful a speech is. I think this is another thing which is really, and it comes through in the book, is really, really interesting. That thing of how in order to speak truth to power, you used to have to go and be in front of power. Mm. And power used to have to listen to you. They used to have to create space to hear you. Um, and that, that doesn't happen so much anymore. I think you saw it with Greta Thunberg brilliantly at the UN and, and how... Um, how powerful it is when she says, I am a 16 year old child, I should not have to be here. Um, and you, you want to say yes, and it's kind of extraordinary that it requires you to be there in order for people to hear you. Um, and that is how it used to be a lot more, certainly around issues around um, queerness and how we now use media. So we now tend to, to, to send out our messages like long distance missiles mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and from award nights or from um, or from behind television programs or, or you know this is a very curious kind of shift and you wonder how it would affect um, how it how it like how much more isolating it is so so that that whole thing comes across very interestingly in that volume and then I'm working with trans kids in India which I'm really enjoying which is um like one of those things that just reminds you how lucky you are and like how extraordinarily how many people there are in the world and how um how much <laughs> that's a design that's an experiential design experience i think you see the 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 creativity um that is born out of necessity mm -hmm. just like there is creativity being born out of this necessity there is creativity born out of the necessities of daily life that is quite extraordinary. Um, and I, I wish we studied that a little more as well. Anyway, that's sort of what I'm working on. The fun side projects. <laughs> Plus we have a trans emoji coming out this year, oh. which I'm rather pleased about. But that project is finished now. I'm not, like, it's, but in October, I think there will be a trans flag emoji on people's, mm -hmm. say, um, that's taken four years. Again, one of those design projects where you're like, surely this is very simple. And you're like, oh no. Not at all simple. <laughs> but in a way, that, that goes back to, uh, again, face-to-face -face and, and long distance, what you said before, about how more powerful face-to-face -face inter interactions are. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. As you said, firing long distance from, from YouTube is not as impactful. No. No. I mean, your reach may be greater, mm. but it's, it's very, very... Um, I think on... Yeah, like like when we are we, we have this reference base with regard to that kind of information and the spread of disinformation and and also just the idea that we have moved from a gate kept model where information or education was controlled by was controlled by the educators was controlled by publishers was controlled by media organisations like that that publisher model where the broadcasters and the government can act in a certain sort of consensus mm. a certain. Mm. Um, to, to, to maintain a sort of singular line of information and then radical information becomes quite radical and can be chased down and, and stamped out to a more um, um, heterogeneous 
kind of model of information around reality where actually we can we can go in and seek out any perspective um, on um, or, 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 or use inf and any number of different points of information as a lens to reality and start to construct our own realities. That's probably a, a subject for a different talk, but it, it is very like the, 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 that influence of the, of the internet and democratizing the means of, um, of production and distribution of information. That's, that's a whole yes. different thing. Mm -hmm. that, has, that has a tremendous <laughs> impact. It's actually, same, yeah, oh, yes. it's, it's the same talk because that is impacting directly in education. Mm -hmm. Democratizing Massively information. So. Massively so. The thing is, I mean, what I find with my students is that, okay, the information is there, but somebody needs to tell you, you know, again, little bits, you know, give you a lead or a start with some bits first. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you can have all the design books, but you got to start from somewhere. Yeah. I also think that, that, that like, we have this kind of like a secondary, like a, a, a pre-tertiary um, problem, which is that these students are not taught to play yes. with information. Yes. They are yes. not taught that this is fun. They are taught to, uh, the question they are actually taught to ask is like, what criteria am I being assessed on? Like what yes. is going to be yes. um, needed in order, like what like lang language, what forms should I be employing? And you're like, Oh, that's not how life works. That's literally not how life works. Like, the, no one cares. But that's a 19th century you, abusive all model of these things, versus... Yeah. 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 And, and it is still there. So we still have, to a great degree, people coming through asking how they will be assessed. Um, and and that's, a, that's, again, it's about a model of... And this is the same in the business world, actually. So maybe there is a benefit to it. To a large extent, like, businesses thrive on creating quite narrow um, objective and key result packages wherein people will be highly focused on, on singular solutions to the detriment of kind of creative or, 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 or like higher returns people would reduce risk and reduce risk and reduce risk and and uh, we could go on i suppose fantastic i don't know that's really that's really, that's really good that's really good sorry i'm trying oh, to no, that's, that's, brilliant. that's brilliant that's brilliant that's brilliant how can how can our viewers and listeners find you oh i'm all over the internet um, <laughs> i am um <clears throat> well um i'm all over the internet it's very easy actually mm -hmm. i think you can mm -hmm. you can like my um I would just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But there's bits and pieces floating yeah. about. And, 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 um, and actually, on my website, there's um, this sign up. So um, if people wanted to sign up for classes, I will, until schools start going back, be doing classes um, for kind of anyone anywhere. Like we've, we've done classes all over the world. We do sort of 30 to 40 minutes just talking about all sorts of different things. Um, and um, mainly around work and specialist areas that I actually understand about. I'm not going to take a biology lesson, um, but but it, it's um, yeah. So on my website is a form which you can find out a little bit more about that. Brilliant. If that interests you. Brilliant. All right. And any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Any 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 any. Uh... Yes, play. Yes, use yes, use yes. use the fact that everything is broken to play. Don't mm. don't want it to be perfect. Like mm. no one expects anything mm. to work at the moment, mm. so it's the mm. best time to experiment with everything. Um, press all the buttons. If you haven't pressed all the buttons, um, then <laughs> that's what you should do. Like, mm. I mean, what's as Trump said? What's the worst that can happen? Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but but it, it's, um, yeah, so on my website is a form which you can find out a little bit more about that. Brilliant. If that interests you. Brilliant. All right. And any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Any, 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 any. Uh... Yes, play. Yes, use yes, use yes. use the fact that everything is broken to play. Don't mm. don't want it to be perfect. Like mm. no one expects anything mm. to work at the moment, mm. so it's the mm. best time to experiment with everything. Um, <laughs> press all the buttons. If you haven't pressed all the buttons, um, then <laughs> that's what you should do. Like, mm. I mean, what's as Trump said? What's the worst that can happen? Um, <laughs>
<laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.